Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. The Supreme Court is considering Joe Biden's censorship of your free speech, President Trump's access to the ballot or presidential immunity, and racial preferences in the military. Today, Matt Barber, our legal expert, will explain. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. On today's show, we have in-studio legal commentary from our constitutional law expert, Matt Barber, who's here to talk about the upcoming slate of cases at the U.S. Supreme Court. Some of them already decided, some of them in process. Welcome to the program, Matt Barber. How are you today, Matt? Good, chaps. Good to be on. Good. I'm, I'm so excited to, to see you and hear you uh, explain to me in layman's terms. Of course, you're an attorney. Uh, you used to teach constitutional law at Liberty University. Uh, and But I'm just a... Uh, uh, I, I'm not a lawyer, but I play one on TV sometimes. So, so I want to I want to get into the nitty gritty of the Supreme Court. There are two particular cases coming up regarding free speech censorship, and one has to do with a state law that says um, uh, platforms cannot censor you, uh, and the other is a case about the Biden administration and federal agencies pressuring YouTube and Facebook to take down our posts and, yeah. and our tweets. Um, explain the difference. Sure. Well, well, clearly, in in terms of, and, and we all remember when the when the Hunter Biden information came out relative to the laptop and monies that were being funneled into the Biden family from the Ukraine and China and other, uh, you know, uh, uh, Ru Russian oligarchs and, and other people, pretty much a litany of uh, of our uh, national enemies. Uh, the FBI and the DOJ got involved in order to, to quash uh, any uh, dissemination effectively in media and in social media of that information. And no news reporting. The, the mainstream media spiked the story and Joe Biden was elected despite the September, October surprise. And, and, and in fact, surveys have shown that uh, upwards of 20 to 25 percent of people who voted for Joe Biden would not have voted for Joe Biden if they had known that, in fact, the story was true. So what happened is the, the federal government stepped in and censored that speech. They did it through a proxy, through these social media networks. And, and what one of the things the Supreme Court will be looking at here, it, it, first of all, you can't do that. As soon as a government agency or government entity steps in and gets a, a private enterprise of some type to do something at its behest, yeah. that be, that uh, private entity becomes an extension of the federal government. It's, it's called agency. It becomes an agent of the federal government and steps into the shoes of the federal government. So what the, what the uh, DOJ and what the Biden administration was trying to do here was have plausible deniability but yet everything has come out through through testimony yeah. that they came in and strong armed Facebook, who Twitter and so who were all too willing to comply. And they took yeah. down our social media posts on YouTube. We get copyright, not copyright, but but we get content strikes, content moderation. What's the difference between that and the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, which allows, I think, in some cases, private companies like Facebook or Twitter or or YouTube, they can moderate our posts if they're not an editor, if they're an editor, or, or what's right. the difference? So, so if they hold themselves out as a public forum, which they do out of one side of the mouth, uh, but then say we have edit, uh, editorial rights as as effectively uh, a quasi news agency, so we can edit, or the, the euphemism that they like to use is content moderation. Uh, that's just out of the other th side. Th of that's their, their mouth. euphemism for censorship. We can censor what we don't agree with, what we don't like. Uh, then the, the reason they do, they do that is because if they are just completely a public forum, uh, ostensibly they expose themselves to potential liability for defamation, 
uh, you know, for anything that comes out of the the right. information that. But that, they're the, trying to have it both ways. Yes. When when they say and, and the DMCA actually clarifies, if they own the content, then they are an editor, they're a news organization, and they can be held liable, liable for that content. for their own content. Right. But if they hold themselves out, oh, we're just a forum for other people's ideas. You can't sue me if Dr. Chaps puts something on YouTube because that's his idea, sue him. Don't sue us, we're just a forum for his ideas. Then they have excusal from liability, Correct. but they want both. They, yeah, they want to have their cake and eat it too. And, and isn't it interesting? And the, and the reason for that is clear. Their, their content moderation, uh, i.e. censorship, you'll notice and, and, and studies have shown, almost exclusively flows in one way and that's against conservative and or Christian That's right. speech and, yep. and they will allow the most outrageous things to to uh, to be said and uttered and and posted on their their platform and Google is the worst you Google yeah. anything um, about a conservative pop personality and it's all negative you Google anything about a Democrat and it's all positive and they have their algorithms set up for that for that exact purpose. yeah they're cheaters it, 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 it's it's it is Pravda. I mean, it, it, it is complete What censorship. happens when the government puts their finger on the scale and they pressure the, that kind of censorship? Well, then effectively it becomes a First Amendment issue. Now, keep, keep in mind that the, the Constitution and, and constitutional violations, First Amendment, Fourth Amendment, Fourteenth Amendment, only apply to government entities. So when they put their finger on the scale and ask these private uh, platforms to censor Certain speech that whoever's in in a position of power or control in the government in the government uh, does not like for some reason, and it's always politically motivated, as it was with Biden. Then effectively, they've deputized these organizations. They become an agent of the right. government. They step into the shoes and become become an agent. Uh, uh, so that's what this Supreme Court case will be looking at. And Biden is behind it, or his administration absolutely is, and, is and, pushing that kind of censorship on conservative and, and voices. And I believe even even some of the liberals on the one or two of the liberals on the court may side with the conservative majority, they say, well, we say the conservative majority, the constitutionalist majority, yeah. they may side with them, uh, I think. And, and so I could I could see some real re re repercussions and legal backlash on this against uh, both uh, our federal government and Facebook, Twitter, and other social media platforms. Okay, let's take a short break. When we come back, President Trump has two cases before the Supreme Court, presidential immunity and ballot access in Colorado. This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. I'm Dr. Chaps. We want you to sign a petition today to stand with Israel. They are under such attack with Arabs and Muslims killing Jews, but here is the Bible territory that God promised to the Israeli and Jewish people. Even in 1993, in the Oslo Accords, Yasser Arafat agreed, these are the current borders of Israel and it's their land. Let's sign that petition, PrayInJesusName.org. Again, PrayInJesusName.org, sign it today. I'm Dr. Chaps. You know, Jesus taught the parable about sowing the seed, and you don't want it wasted, you want it to grow with 30, 60, 100 fold for the kingdom of Jesus Christ. I'll tell you three mission areas that we're doing here at Pray In Jesus Name. I think our charity does more with less than any other charity I know. We are fertile seed. For example, number one, we pray in millions of television homes every day or every weekend on eight networks. We have 2.5 billion home TV impressions every month. The second area, we feed orphans and children in some of the poorest slums overseas. We're building a new vocational school, we're digging wells, and we're serving the poor when you give to pray in Jesus' name. Number three, we defend religious freedom, especially for our troops and our chaplains. We've now helped send five million petitions to Congress. We've helped change bad laws or policies in 13 states and four times in federal law. You know my story as a former Navy chaplain, standing up for the right to pray in Jesus' name and defending religious freedom. Would you donate today? In fact, we want you to come up monthly pledge sponsor when you visit PrayInJesusName.org, on the right side, click the Monthly Pledge Sponsor button at PrayInJesusName.org. Your monthly gift will help change the world in Jesus' name. 
I'm Dr. Chaps. Do you want to get free news alerts faster than everybody else? Do you want to get invitations to private events to come meet me in person? Do you want to get a free religious freedom window decal? Pick up your phone, it's right there by your hand, and text this word, text the word PRAY to 24365. Text the word PRAY to 24365 and we'll sign you up. Then call us at 866-Obey-God. Again, that's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D to get a free religious freedom sticker. Call today. Defending your religious freedom, here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps. The United States Supreme Court is hearing cases argued by the lawyers representing the 45th president, Donald Trump, who is arguing, first of all, let's take them in turn, he should be on the ballot in Colorado, yes or no? Absolutely, 100%, and anybody who listened to the oral arguments, in fact, uh, some people are saying this will come down as an 8-0 or 8-1 decision. I think, I don't see how it doesn't come down as a 9-0 decision in favor of Trump. What we saw the uh, Supreme Court of, of our own state of Colorado and in, uh, in, in, in the state in which I am licensed, when we saw them come out with this arbitrary notion that he, that uh, Donald Trump could be removed from the ballot for, quote, insurrection, which is this moving, it's like trying to hammer Jello to a wall. He hasn't been charged with insurrection. I like Jello, by the way. <laughs> he wasn't charged with insurrection. He hasn't been convicted of insurrection. This, this was a gross violation of due process and an embarrassing overreach it, that I think has humiliated a lot of attorneys uh, and embarrassed us right here in the state of Colorado. So It'll be overturned. The Colorado Secretary of State, Jenna Griswold, is a Democrat and she's a partisan political figure and she's obviously anti-Trump, And but she has argued in court. She stood for 10 minutes before the US Supreme Court saying, uh, is it the 14th Amendment or there's a clause in there that says- Section 3, 14th uh, 14, uh, Amendment. If you engaged in an insurrection, you're not eligible to run for office. This was applied in the Civil War afterwards to officers of the uh, uh, rather officers of the government. So there's there are multiple questions here. Is the president even considered an, an, an officer? Did it apply to elected officials? Was did it apply to delegates? Yeah. So there there are a lot of different uh, aspects that are going to be decided here. But the big picture on this is this notion of insurrection. First of all, it was it was uh, it became it was uh, it became unrowdy. People didn't take up arms on January sixth. On January sixth, didn't the try protest to protest over... outside. Of, and Trump specifically said that day, "Peacefully make your voices known." He didn't say invade the Capitol with violence. <laughs> no. And we condemn any violence that happened that day. Of course. Um, they... So for the, for them to try to put the tag and label and hang insurrection around President Trump's neck with no due process, with no charges, with no criminal violation, just to broadly throw this term arbitrarily and capriciously on the president just because the media likes to call it an insurrection, yeah. uh, it, it, it's absolutely embarrassing. It, it, it is one of the most outrageous things I've ever seen a state Supreme Court do. And I think it was it was not well received. No, even Katenji Jackson Brown, the, the newest uh, obviously leftist appointed by Joe Biden himself, she argued that in the 14th Amendment, it doesn't say president. It yeah. says officers of the military can't run for office, yeah. congressmen can't run for office. If they were engaged in the Civil War, a violent overthrow of the government back in the 1800s, they can't run for office. But it doesn't say president there. So was Trump acting as president when he made that speech? Well, uh, he, he was still in office. He was still president. But the, the fact of the matter is, even through this fraudulent impeachment that they had, trying to impeach President Trump for after the fact, for, uh, after he left office, which has never happened before, for so-called insurrection, he was acquitted. He, they, they couldn't even, so, right. so there are potential arguments here of, of even double jeopardy here by, by trying to remove him from the ballot. My hope is that the Supreme Court will take care of other states like Maine and Minnesota and some other states that are saying they're going to in Maine, the Secretary of State herself just unilaterally said, I'm gonna make I'm gonna I declare that he's removed from the ballot for insurrection. That's even more ridiculous than what the the Colorado Supreme Court did. But my hope is, and I suspect that it'll be an eight one or nine oh decision, and they'll basically make it very clear 
that Trump is going to be on the ballot in all 50 states and, and that they can't use this uh, insurrection, the guise of insurrection, in order to try to facilitate their election suppression and interference. And that's what this is. So, so let's say the Supreme Court rules, yes, he's on the ballot in Colorado and Maine and other states. But then there's other cases that Trump has about presidential immunity. So he's being accused of crimes now. He's going to a criminal trial, I think, in New York, another one in Georgia, uh, regarding his leadership or actions on January 6th or, or in his private businesses. Does he have immunity when, for the time that he was president anyway, those four years, any actions he took during those four years, he has to grant permission for himself to be sued because as the sovereign, the government has this practice dating back to old England called sovereign immunity. What is that? So, so what sovereign immunity says, and, and the idea of sovereign immunity is to keep uh, fri- you know, massive amounts of lawsuits being filed against the federal government and have, or any government, even a municipality, and having them tied up in litigation and, and thereby hindering their ability to, to exercise the, the, the reason for which they were created, to the exercise proper their proper and, governance. And, yeah. um, that's the idea of sovereign immunity. Uh, in terms of a president, can a president be, ch- be charged for crimes that he, uh, alleged crimes that he committed in his capacity as president of, of the United States? That's one of the, the, the big questions that's going to arise here. It's a wild card. The, the Supreme Court has never ruled one way or the other Uh, There are certain people who read the Constitution, like Trump's lawyers, that say, no, you can't go after him uh, uh, for the... And and there's a valid argument to be made for why you shouldn't be able to go after a president for actions that that may have technically or, or, uh, you know, facially been, been criminal... Uh, you know, I mean, let's let's be honest. The CIA commits crimes all the time. They take people out. They kill people. I mean, so the you know the question is, can you go after a president? And their argument is, you open up the floodgates for retaliation. So and we become a banana republic because every time a president leaves office, then the opposing party is going to people in, in uh, prosecutors and people in positions of power are going to go after that president. That's valid. I don't think that the Supreme Court ultimately is going to say carte blanche. I think they'll have it narrowly tailored. I think they'll they'll have a decision that does not give Trump and say carte blanche. No, you uh, the, the the president has absolute sovereignty and and um, and, and you cannot prosecute the, the president for crimes he committed while president before. Uh, there's kind of an amalgamation of, of, yeah. of alleged crimes from when he was in office, before he was in office, et cetera. See, I think the the original intent of the doctrine of sovereign immunity is that y- you want to protect the government's ability to function. So don't be suing the president while he is the president. But if that applies to somebody after they've left office, he's no longer properly functioning in the government. Maybe he is liable for some of the alleged crimes that he may have committed, The Supreme Court will have to decide that. When we come back, racial preferences in the military, also at the Supreme Court. Hi, I'm Dr. Chaps. I want to introduce my friend, Mike Lindell, who wants to help support our ministry in the work of PIJN News. Uh, Mike, what do you think? Well, I think everybody out there, y'all need to get behind Pray in Jesus Names Ministry. Dr. Chaps here, but this great ministry needs your support and you can, you should donate to it. You can also use your promo code Pray News and anything you're getting from my pillow with big discounts, a lot of those proceeds are coming right back. I'm gonna put them right back into this, into your amazing charity and show. My employees and I are excited to announce it's our 20th anniversary. And to celebrate, we're bringing you a limited edition My Pillow. The Giza Elegance My Pillow is made with the most amazing cotton. Two inch pipe gusset comes in four custom loft levels and it's machine washable and dryable. When I got my pillow, I'm asleep almost immediately. I stay asleep at night and I wake up more well rested in the morning. My patented fill adjusts to your exact individual needs and helps keep your neck supported and aligned. That's why we've been around for 20 years because my pillow works. 
Go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use your promo code to get your limited edition 20th anniversary MyPillow queen size. Retails for $69.98, now only $19.98. That's right, only $19.98. With my 60-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Sleep well, America! To celebrate the new year, we're having the biggest sale ever on overstock clearance and brand new products. For example, save 60% on our Goose Down Comforts, the best comforters ever. They go perfectly with our MyPillow bed sheets and duvet covers. Save 25% on our brand new kitchen towels. They're made with the same technology as our famous My Towels. Our initial quantities are extremely low, so get them now before they go. Our seasonal flannel sheets are finally in. You save up to 50% and they sell out fast every year, so order now. They're truly the best flannel sheets you'll ever sleep on. Or save up to 80% on all our clearance items. And this is where it gets even better. For a limited time, your entire order ships absolutely free. So go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use that promo code to get deep discounts on all MyPillow products. And for a limited time, your order ships absolutely free. Stay tuned for the end of our show to learn how to partner with this ministry. Here's Dr. Chaps. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Chaps, joined by constitutional attorney Matt Barber. Uh, Matt, mention your website, X truthbms.com. That's right. It, it's X, the, the letter X, truthbms for body, mind, and soul.com. BMS. All right. Body, mind, and soul. So tell me um, the latest I've heard. Okay. Uh, last year, the Supreme Court ruled against Harvard. They said you cannot use racism as a reason to admit minorities and exclude majorities or, or exclude Asians who are smarter sometimes and get better test scores. You've got to admit them if they're more qualified, not on the basis of skin color. That applies to all the Ivy League schools, but not West Point, Annapolis, or the U.S. Air Force Academy. Why can they still discriminate in the military? Right, and, and the common vernacular is affirmative action. We hear people talk about affirmative action, and yeah. that, that's under this idea of equity, right? Not equality, equity meaning e e equality of outcome as opposed to equality of opportunity. So the idea of affirmative action is says there's the, you know, certain races have been so downtrodden that we have to give them a leg up and elevate them, uh, their, their, uh, their uh, access to schools and so forth above those of other people who are in the disfavored races, white people, Asians, as you mentioned, and so forth. So the Supreme Court, finally, this was the biggest blow to the notion of affirmative action that we've seen in, 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 in decades. They said no Harvard, no uh, the, uh, any, any uh, government you know, funded school, no, you cannot discriminate based upon the color of one's skin. And that's exactly what affirmative action does under this, this idea of DEI. And Martin Luther King Jr. would have applauded this decision. A hundred percent he would have. And, 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 this, and, you know, and you hear people say this notion of color blindness. It's so racist to, to say that, that I'm colorblind is racist. No, it's saying I am somebody who objectively observes the facts and judge things based upon the merits of those things and or people. So right. the, the Supreme Court, there was an, uh, uh, a motion for an injunction to be filed against uh, the Air Force Academy and, and West Point and other schools and so forth, saying, "Hey, look! Now that har this Harvard decision has applied, the, uh, the these uh, military schools, which are continuing this uh, effectively affirmative action, unconstitutional affirmative action policy, we need an injunction to tell them basically cease and desist." Uh, uh, the court ruled, at least at this point, no, it's that it's not ripe for an injunction at this point. I believe ultimately right. the court will hear that case and will ultimately rule, no, that the, the Harvard decision applies, yeah. and that that kind of racial uh, discr anti that racist discrimination will also be done away with. Uh, meanwhile, <clears throat> we published on this news program the original emails which were obtained through the Freedom of Information Act of the three-star general, superintendent of the Air Force Academy, Richard Clark, who emailed his superiors, including Lloyd Austin, the Secretary of Defense, a couple of African-American leaders saying, yeah, we should favor people of, of, of racial minority, and we should continue to fight for our right to shape the force racially 
because that's good for the military in the long run. I'm paraphrasing, but you can read his actual emails making this argument. Uh, and now the Supreme Court is not going to stop that for now. For now, at least. And, and it may be years, and, and, and which is unconscionable. And, 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 and what is also unconscionable is for them to take our United States military and make it a petri dish for this kind of radical social experimentation. We already saw them do that when they got rid of don't ask, don't tell, and we see what that's done to, to morale with, within the military. You know, the military needs to be about killing people and breaking things, as Rush Limbaugh used to say, and yep. you need the, if, if we want merit-based enrollment and merit-based uh, elevation of people and and uh, we'll have a sharper military well the military is where we need it you know first and foremost you don't want a bunch of affirmative action or dei uh, diversity in, uh, equity and inclusion uh hires a bunch of uh, 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 you know kind of run-of-the-mill people who are not that at the top of their game hired simply because of the color of their skin and others discriminated against and yeah. not hired it, if we need that anywhere <clears throat> it's in the military during his Senate confirmation hearings, the U.S. Secretary of Defense, Lloyd Austin, uh, who has been sick, by the way, we're praying for his recovery, uh, but he testified, yes, I'm going to purge the conservatives if I'm confirmed. Uh, and then he did. Uh, you know, he meant to purge the neo-Nazis, which, which I probably approve of, right? We don't need them. But instead, he purged the conservative Christians who, were, who objected to the vaccine on the basis of conscience. He purged 8,000 or more members just from the U.S. Army. Uh, at the U.S. Air Force Academy, my alma mater, 13 letters of reprimand, four firsties were not allowed to graduate, although later they apologized because of your petitions. You persuaded Congress to change the law. Now those graduates have been commissioned. We've heard good news out of that. Matt, last, uh, last minute, um, and I'll lead us in a word of prayer. Just, well, the, just to close, the left has turned our United States military into a woke social experiment and we shouldn't be surprised at why their, their uh, enlistment numbers are at, at a dangerously low level and people are getting out right and left and they have exactly the wrong kind of people protected in the United States military. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we pray for America. We pray that the Supreme Court will, in your wisdom, Father, in your justice, get all these decisions right in the long run for what is best for our country. Uh, we pray for our military, for our troops that enlistments will be up, that conservatives will want to serve, that Christians will want to serve in the military and protect our nation. Uh, Father, bless America. God bless America. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Our guest has been Matt Barber, xtruthbms.com. Our website is prayinjesusname.org. Would you please donate today at prayinjesusname.org? We need your gifts, large or small, to bring you this viewer-sponsored program can't do it without you. You can give by telephone at 866-Obey-God or just call for prayer. It's totally free. 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. We'll see you next time. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best financial donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now, 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.